Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Ahrefs Tools Corp video tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about how to create an Amazon Web Server instance. This video will cover signing in or signing up for an Amazon Web Services account, creating an instance, a virtual Windows server, and accessing your instance via remote desktop. This is what one would do to build up a WebHub appliance. In this example, we create the lowest cost appliance, a nano instance with a minimal one gigabyte drive D. This is suitable for running WebHub demos and, in fact, many low to medium traffic applications. Subsequent tutorials will show how to use PowerShell scripts to quickly build WebHub appliances. First thing you want to do is go to AWS amazon.com and log into your account. If you're a new user, just select I am a new user and fill out all the required information. Once your account has been verified by Amazon, you'll be able to log in and give all the details that you'll need to complete your account. Once you're in, you want to go to services and select EC2. Then select the appropriate region of the earth, usually the one closest to you. The next thing you want to do is launch instance, which is how we'll create our machine. You want to go and select Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 Base, the 64-bit version. Once you're in, make sure you select the general purpose T2 Nano machine. It's more than enough for what we'll be needing to use it for. Then you want to select a subnet. When you select a subnet, make sure that there are some extra IP addresses available in case you want to add more machines later on down the line. Also, as a safeguard, just make sure you select protect against accidental termination so you don't accidentally delete your machine. Next, you want to tag your instance and you can tag it anything you'd like. This is just for your reference, just something that would make sense to you. And then we're going to add a new volume. You can see Amazon gives you a 30 gig default volume. We want to just add a second volume with one gig additional. It's more than enough for what we'll need. Then you're going to want to name a security group because we're going to put this all to make sure that you can access your machine via remote desktop as well as from the web. Now you see this warning. It's just telling you that you don't want to have your remote desktop be accessible from anywhere. If anybody has a password, they can get onto your machine. So what we suggest doing is that you just simply use the IP address from your box. Initially, you will use the default port of 3389 to access the server. Later, a PowerShell script will make it easy to use a non-standard port for remote desktop. Restrict port 3389 to my IP so no one else can get onto the server until you are done configuring it. Here's a completed version of it, which has remote desktop as well as regular ports which allow from anywhere. So that would be for public viewing. If you don't want to have it be publicly viewable, you don't have to put those last couple of entries on there. Next, you're going to see that your configuration is not eligible for a free tier. That's because of the extra gigabyte, but we really want to show you how much that extra gigabyte on that second drive is costing you. In this case, it's $6.45. If you were to add 50 gigabytes, which we don't need, but just to show you the difference, that would cost you $8.45. It's very inexpensive to run. Once you've acknowledged and agreed to pay for that extra gigabyte, you just come on down to the next screen and click Launch, at which point you're going to be asked to select a key pair so that you can securely get on to the box that you've created via remote desktop. You can name the key pair anything you want. I just put an EC2 key pair because it was easy for me to remember and then download that file onto your machine wherever you are working on this project. Now you're likely to see launch failed especially if this is done wants to verify that you are in fact the owner of this account. Once that's done then you can come in here and you're ready to get onto your box. The way you're going to get to your box from remote desktop is to click on the instance itself and then you will be prompted to download the remote desktop file. Go ahead and do that and put that into a logical place for you and rename it to something that's perhaps a little easier to remember than the long name they give you. And then go get the key pair that you created to create the password 
that you'll need to get onto your box. When you go to log in, you're going to go to the IP address with the port that you created. Now, just as a note, the initial port will always be 3389 for remote desktop. It's okay to add another one to the security firewall in anticipation of using a custom port, but that custom port will not come into play until after the relevant PowerShell script has run to adjust things, i.e. 5 or 10 minutes into building up the WebHub appliance. Once you've done that, you'll log in and you'll be able to see your desktop. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you soon.